Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope that you're all having a really fantastic afternoon or evening. It depends on when you're watching this video. I hope you're all doing really great. And so, of course, I'm here with what is happening across the tropical Atlantic. But of course, the focus of this video will be on a tropical wave to emerge from Africa, given a chance of development. So it could possibly pose a threat to the Caribbean as we're going to be heading into next week. And so before I go into details... Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and of course tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. And so of course as I usually start out with my videos we're going to be looking at what is currently happening across the North Atlantic. So there we can see uh, the development of some afternoon shower and thunderstorm activity across some areas. Lots of that activity uh, just in the vicinity of northeastern South America affecting Venezuela, parts of northern Guyana, sections of Suriname and French Guiana as well. And so uh, heading further west though in the southwest Caribbean and we can definitely see lots of that activity that I spoke about uh, in this morning's update. And then, of course, across the Northern Caribbean, it is pretty sunny for most of us, but uh, there is definitely some activity developing, especially in sections of uh, eastern Cuba, as well as some spots of Jamaica, and even in some parts of the Bahamas, as well as uh, also for Hispaniola. But for most other areas, for most of the Lesser Antilles, uh, going down to the ABC Islands, and also over into parts of Northern Central America, there isn't much activity right now. So now we're drifting back out into the open waters of the Atlantic, drifting to the coast of Africa, and there we see that blob of activity, lots of convection in association with the tropical wave that should be emerging from the coast as we head to later today and early tomorrow. And so this is projected to possibly become something of concern uh, as it tracks across the tropical Atlantic. So let's go on to the latest NHC forecast. And so here we have the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and this system is given a 20 percent chance of development. So imminent development is very unlikely, but it is once it is located to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands that we can start to see uh, something going on with it. We can start to see it getting organized and eventually intensifying because conditions are expected to be conducive around that time as it is going to be making its way across uh, the tropical Atlantic. And so, as I said earlier, it could become a cause for concern for sections of the Caribbean as it could possibly develop. And as I mentioned, if you watch uh, this morning's update, Multiple models have been hinting at something, even though they're all showing something weak. They're all expecting that we're going to be seeing some development as we head into next week. And so for the North Northeastern Caribbean, please be on watch. Of course, this is not to spread any source of misinformation, but just to say be on alert because this could very well pose a threat. And the problem with any system, it doesn't even have to be a tropical cyclone. It could be a tropical wave. It could remain as a wave. It could be a depression. Those things are also very much dangerous and sometimes overlooked because of their intensity, but they do unleash some flood trigger and rainfall. And the problem with any landfall and storm is with the water, be it the storm surge when it comes to strong hurricanes or that inland flooding as a result of uh, all of the heavy rainfall that takes place in the affected areas. And so uh, if you're in sections of the Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, maybe for Puerto Rico, uh, you guys could be impacted by this as we head into the latter part of next week, roughly over a week from now. But how strong could it possibly get? Let's go ahead and take a look at some different factors that will influence this, beginning with sea surface temperature. So here we have this temperature anomaly map here, and of course, heading to the warmer colors, those shades of yellows, oranges, reds, that is where we have above normal temperatures. And as I have been reiterating a lot lately, the Atlantic is facing some record warming. So it is very hot out there. And so uh, those temperatures are definitely going to be fueling that system to actually develop. But of course, there are other factors that will be helping to influence its intensity. And when we look at the actual sea surface temperature map, tropical cyclones typically require around 26 degrees Celsius at the minimum in order to really start to organize and get themselves together. Closer to the coast of Africa, where this will be emerging, we're seeing that the uh, waters are not very warm. But as we head more toward the west, heading to the Caribbean, it gets warmer. We start to see 26, 26. 27, 28, and that 29 degrees Celsius isotherm across an extensive area. So, and so uh, once it is going to be continued west, it is going to be headed into those warmer waters, which will aid in intensification. But of course, there is that Saharan dust. And so there's lots of dry air out there right now. And so dry air really helps to uh, suppress development of those showers and thunderstorms. And that is exactly what tropical cyclones need. That uh, shower and thunderstorm activity is what they need in order to really get 
get themselves together. So the dry air is going to be counteracting that uh, development. And there is also the wind shear that really helps to displace activity, just cuts off those thunderstorms as they grow and prevent us from having an organized uh, symmetrical cyclone. And so let us see what the models have to show starting out with GFS. So there it is definitely showing that uh, low pressure system, likely a storm, uh, continually making its way toward the west and getting organized, not becoming something very strong. And as it heads more to the northwest, curving around that high pressure, that is when we're going to start to see some weakening taking place. And even look over into the camera. Let's go back a bit. Around, uh, heading to around the middle part of next week, the GFS is still consistent about something developing in the basin and uh, in the northwestern part of the basin and possibly uh, intensifying in there so nothing new as i said nothing new is marked on nhc's uh, outlook map as of this afternoon in the western caribbean it's just that disturbance off the coast of africa so that is what gfs is expecting and so as we now move on to the uh, latest run from the Euro model here, we can definitely see that uh, the model is expecting that low pressure area to develop as this continues accelerating to the west. There we have the high pressure. So of course it is moving along the periphery of it, starting to move on a northwestward track, approaching the northeastern Caribbean, the Leeward Islands, going to the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and uh, making its way up and weakening. So likely going to be encountering maybe more wind shear, some of those stronger upper level winds this place and activity and helping the system to weaken. So that is what Euro is expecting. There's a lot of uncertainty down the road and this can very well become our next name system, uh, provided that nothing actually develops in the Caribbean. Uh, so only time will tell guys. And that is why my channel is here to keep you updated on a daily basis and even twice a day at times on what could potentially happen. And so, uh, as I said, I'm going to be continually tracking this for you as time progresses and that is pretty much it for this update and so i hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and you can share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be weatherwise